Hi guys, you're watching The Llewellyn. My name is Wednesday and I'm a media specialist here. And today we're with Kit Collins and we're gonna talk a little bit about her project, Let's Dance Lowell. Would you mind introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your project? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Kit Collins. I'm a muralist, illustrator, and public artist. Um, this year I've had the really great fortune and privilege and pleasure of working on a citywide public art project in Lowell. Um, in collaboration with the city and so many community organizations. The series is called Let's Dance Lowell, and it is a series of eight sidewalk murals all around the city, one in each neighborhood. Each one is an interactive dance piece that folks can literally dance on, are encouraged to literally dance on, and each one is created in collaboration with a different dancer or dance group that lives or works or is connected to this wonderful city. Now, what prompted you to start working on this project? Have you done it before? Yeah, great question. I have done a lot of different types of murals before in different communities. I've done a project quite similar to this once before, uh, closer to Boston in Roslindale Village. Um, it was a similar concept, but a little bit different in scope. Um, that was also a series of eight sidewalk murals. Each one was a dance diagram mural. In that case, I worked with just three local choreographers. So we kind of spread out their contributions over these eight sidewalk murals. They were all concentrated in the Roslindale Village uh, downtown area, right in the business district. So with Let's Dance Lowell, in conversations with partners at the city, we wanted to take that same idea, but instead of concentrating all of these danceable surfaces in the downtown, we thought, wow, there's so much incredible public art downtown already. Let's push some more public art out into the neighborhoods. Um, and so it's been a little bit different in scope in terms of how it's distributed. And we've also brought in way more collaborators than I've ever worked on in a single project before. So what stage is the project in right now? I, I know that you have to uh, paint the murals. You have to work with choreographers. I'm sure that there's events that are attached to it. Where are you at now? Yeah, so we are coming up on 50% through the painting of the murals themselves. But in terms of the timeline of the project, most of the time spent on it, more than 50% is actually behind us already because so much of this year has been spent um, really on outreach and conversations to inform the mural series. Um, that started back in December. So here we are in September. I hope on, uh, you know, in a few days to be finished with the fourth mural in the series, so about halfway through the painting timeline. Um, but that was preceded by really months and months of outreach and conversations and asking people, hey, where in your neighborhood should a mural go? What type of dances do you think should be featured? What dances do you really love in Lowell? What dances, you know, speak to you and your community in Lowell? That's not a part of the painting process but it is a part of the planning process and I think it's a really meaningful part. So now that we've got to, now that we've gotten to the actual mural phase of this eight part mural project, um, I do hope to be finished with the mural series um, by the end of October, early November, and hopefully we will have a really big, beautiful celebration to say thank you to everybody who had a hand in it after that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like uh, that the artwork installation isn't just about like putting up the murals themselves, but doing it in conversation with the respective neighbor neighborhoods. It uh, sounds a lot more intentional that way, where you can kind of be like, you know, kind of get input as to what this should look like and, and uh, uh, be collaborative in the way it gets uh, established. Now, you've been putting in a lot of time. It sounds like uh, over nine months if it started in December, the outreach. Uh, so what excites you the most about the, the work that you're doing with this project? Mm. 
Wow, what a great question. There are, it's, there's so many things that excite me about doing this type of work. Um, of course, I love painting. Um, painting, painting murals is a huge part of my creative practice as a working artist. So um, I love the challenge of making murals on kind of unconventional surfaces. Every mural site is a little bit different and that's definitely true when you're painting on the ground that people walk and roll and bike on. Um, it's an interesting logistical challenge, but even more than that and the like tactile work of painting in everyday places, it has been even more inspiring than I thought it would be to get to dive into pockets of the Lowell community through this project to meet so many incredible dancers and creatives and culture bearers, and even for people who do not consider themselves part of the art or dance community, um, Lowell is full of creative champions, people who are community liaisons, people who are liaisons for their neighborhood, for their culture, for their community, who, even if they're not dancers themselves, were so willing to meet with me, to talk with me, to say, you should talk to that person. Oh, if you haven't talked to that group yet, you definitely should. Oh, you have to know about this group. Oh, you have to know about this dance. Um, youth groups, community groups that have really jumped at opportunities to lend a hand, to be involved, to share the process of muraling um, with youth in their community, with other people who haven't had the chance to work on a mural yet. Um, and that is just the most special thing in the world. I love what I do, um, but I think that public art um, really takes on a new level of meaning when it's not just something that pops up overnight that now people get to look at and maybe they know where it came from or why and maybe they don't, but rather something that people can say, I knew that that was happening, I had a chance to weigh in on it, maybe I even got to put a paintbrush on it. I think that that um, is what makes public art into community art. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, so we have sort of a broad overview of the project could we get a little bit um, granular about what goes into creating these murals? Um, you, you mentioned some of the groups that you work with um, and the process, but could we get a little bit more detail into that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get into the weeds. So where should we start? Should we start with the process or should yeah. we talk with the technicalities of painting? Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit more into, you mentioned that it's there, there are things to think about in terms of like you know, the, the ground that's being tread on and whatnot. Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the technical aspects and what makes using like a sidewalk as a canvas uh, interesting? Yes, absolutely. So there are a lot of little steps in the process that go into determining where we're going to paint. And that's true of any mural, not just a ground or sidewalk mural. Um, you have to think about who owns the mural wall or the mural ground, um, what type of surface is on, is it in good condition, like is it a new sidewalk or asphalt in relatively good condition, does it have a lot of cracks, is it um, going to be renovated soon. So the way that we landed on our eight uh, mural locations for this series, um, first as a part of that outreach process, we went and we said, okay, for each neighborhood, let's call a lot of suggestions for where good locations would be. Where is there good foot traffic? Where do people tend to congregate? Where would be visible, but not in the way? Then we took, um, you know, kind of the suggestions that got mentioned the most or got the most votes um, had to be passed through um, a couple of city agencies. I've been working very closely with the Office of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. They've been incredible. They've been my, my point person, my department for this project, um, but the Office um, of Planning and Development has also, the DPD has also been essential in this process. And they kind of had to have the final say so because they have the street paving list, they have the sidewalk repair list, and um, they were my, my go-to people to say, is this sidewalk gonna get re-renovated <laughs> in less than five years? Because if it is, let's not pour a lot of love onto this one little section just to have our hearts broken. Um, so it really is kind of a technical, like what's gonna go on on the ground here? Is it going to be, is it going to last? And is it going to be conducive to painting? Then when it comes to actually painting on the sidewalk, on the ground, there's several considerations that are pretty sim similar to um, painting on any other type of surface. Um, is it in good condition? What type of material should we use to make sure that the paint is going to be durable and stay looking as fresh as possible for as long as possible? The question that I get the most often is, how does this work? You're painting on the ground and people are gonna step on it. Isn't it just gonna get worn away? And um, 
what I love to tell people about is that what we use is uh, a really solid primer. I use a primer for any mural I'm doing because it sticks really well to the surface and it sticks really well to the paint. So it makes sure that your paint is going to stay as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the paint that I use is the paint that I would use for any um, outdoor mural project. It is exterior latex acrylic. Uh, it is exterior latex acrylic house paint, the same that you would type to uh, use to paint the outside of your building. So it doesn't last forever, um, but it does last a pretty long time. And there really is a differential in lifespan for murals that are just going to be walked or biked or rolled on versus murals that are going to be driven on. Because these are on the sidewalks, um, I think we can expect to enjoy them for several years. That's really cool. And it sounds like it's not super inaccessible to get these materials, a, a good primer and some outdoor paint. And that point you made too about like making sure the sidewalk is there for a few years, like I, I'd even take that into consideration that you could pull up a mural and then maybe it's on the list of things to be repaved or, or uh, very cool, very cool. So where are some of these uh, murals throughout the various neighborhoods of Lowell? Yeah, thanks for asking. So like I mentioned, I'm working on number four uh, this week. Mm -hmm. So we have three that are already finished that people can go out and uh, hop around on. The first one that was painted this year um, was the mural in the Highlands neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This one was choreographed by two leaders on the Lowell High School step team. And it is right outside the Mulligan um, splash pad and playground on Avenue C. They did such an incredible job choreographing that one. It's like pretty detailed. They gave me some excellent input on color schemes. So I really recommend folks go in. I mean, obviously you should go and look at all of them, but that was a really excellent one to start out with. So that's right by the Mulligan splash pad in the Highlands. The next one um, we painted is in Centerville. It's on Bridge Street, where Bridge Street meets Robinson. There's that little path that grows up to the Robinson School. We painted the Salsa on One mural, choreographed by Salsa in Lowell, right at the base of that walking path that goes up to the school, because um, we were told that that's a really popular way for kids to get up to the school by going up that path. And we got a little, we got a little Salsa down there at the intersection by the crosswalk. Um, and then the third one that just went up a couple weeks ago, um, this location is very special. Uh, we painted the Compa, which was choreographed by the Women Stars, a very new uh, dance troupe comprised of uh, young women who are recent uh, immigrants from Haiti. Um, they're affiliated with the International Institute of New England, really amazing dance group, loved working with them. They're delightful. Um, we painted their Compa mural right by the Wamasset Falls Overlook, which is at the entrance to the Concord River Greenway um, off of Lawrence Street in South Lowell. That location is gorgeous. It like ruined me for all other mural locations because I was like watching herons fly as I was painting. It's very beautiful. Um, so really have to recommend that one as well. That's wicked cool. Um, and I like the idea of it just being sort of like on the way to school or on the way to work. Do a little, uh, spice up your commute a little bit as you're walking to or fro from the place. I understand. So you mentioned some of the um, dance styles. I guess I'm curious as to some of the other dance styles, but also like, how do you work with a choreographer to kind of get the steps? Uh, I imagine you just like paint their feet and then see where they land and then <laughs> trace over those. Yeah, I'm smiling because like this creative project that I like insist on continuing to do is like so incredibly hard. Like taking a three-dimensional movement, somebody who, you know, if you're a dancer, you probably have a nuanced craft, you're placing your body, your feet very intentionally, it's complicated, it's in three dimensions. Getting that into a 2D dance diagram, I've been doing this for a while, it's still really, really hard. Mm -hmm. um, so I just always have to clown on myself for continuing to take it on and like bang my head into a wall. And then eventually you break through and you have your design and it's so satisfying. Typically, my process is a little flexible because just every collaboration looks a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Typically what I like to do, ideally if this is possible with the choreographer, once we connect and we say, okay, we're going to work together, I like to meet um, in person to look at their dance, have them perform for me, get a sense of it, look at it from some different angles. And then if possible, assuming that the dance has a lot to do with um, footwork, which many of them do, but not all of them, um, I have these big sh sheets of like butcher paper that I take to the meeting with me that I have them like stand on and do their dance on. 
And then I say, okay, let's go step by step. Step one, okay, now stop. <laughs> and I draw around their foot and then I have them keep going. So I make a tracing of where their feet are landing. And I have like, I might number them or I have the video to pair with it. What I do then, I go back to my office. I stand on a chair and I take a photograph of this sketch. And from there, I can transfer it into my like digital drawing process and kind of build a blueprint around that. That kind of process is ideal because the spacing is what's hardest for me as somebody who's just drawing these dances. Um, but I also work from video if that's most accessible for the choreographer. And from there, it's just a matter of, you know, kind of your uh, standard design and revision process. I'll make a version, I'll send it to the choreographer. I say, does this look right? Is this what you meant? Does this feel accurate? Does this feel like what you're trying to get across? And once we get it to a hopefully roughly accurate place, we can start getting into the weeds in terms of, okay, how should we decorate this? What else should be present apart from just the instructions? What color should we use? Do you like where the text is? Should there be more instructions, less instructions? Until we got it locked. One of the things I was kind of curious about is are there any good dance spots in or around Lowell that you might recommend to folks who might start with a mural on the sidewalk and want to continue their dance journey? Um, perhaps it's an established venue or maybe just a nice park or something like that. Well, great question. So the answer I have to give is that one of the reasons I love painting dance murals is because I want people to just dance anywhere. I want more dance in random places. So I hope that people start on the sidewalk on the dance murals and then just continue to bop around in any random place. In public, definitely in public. Start on the mural, carry it forward. Let's just let's just bring more groove in and whimsy and fun and levity into our daily life because I think we all need it. But um, there are so many other wonderful, more established venues for dance throughout Lowell, of course. Um, North Common Park is one of the places that was recommended to me over and over again because so many dance events take place there um, already in Lowell. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out Pinellas because I like if I had a nickel for everybody who was like, saw some night at Pinella in the time I've been doing outreach about this project. So, uh, you know, got, got to shout them out as well for being a, a harbinger of dance in Lowell. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, and yeah, so you heard it here. If you walk to work, start dancing to work. Um, so one other thing I, I was curious about with this kind of um, range of dances that are available, is there one that you might recommend to someone who's maybe a little bit newer to dance, who might be a little bit less comfortable with dance? Yeah, that's a really good question. I try pretty hard to strike a balance with the dance murals where they each one is authentic to the dancers, the choreographer's vision. It's not a reduced or flattened version of the dance. However, we do work to have it be a, a simple enough crop of their dance or a simple enough version that you don't need to already be a confident dancer to try it or to feel like you're attempting it. Um, that being said, I think there are a few that come to mind as like maybe good ones to start with, and then you, you know, go to the rest of the uh, the series of eight. I think that salsa on one. I know a lot of people are familiar with salsa. A lot of people have taken salsa classes with with uh, Francois and Don. Um, that's a good accessible one to start with. Salsa on one in Centerville. Um, I think that the Kamai social dance um, outside Clemente Park across from Pylon Plaza, when that one is painted in October, I think that that will be a really great one for people to get started with, and it's a great one to do in a group as well. Um, I also think that the Cumbia mural, which will go up in Pawtucket uh, also in October, that's a really great accessible dance step to start with. But then again, I always like to tell people, I do this because I'm a painter, not because I'm a dancer. I'm not a good <laughs> dancer. I do have two left feet, but if I can do it, you better join me. I've also taken Francois and Don's Intro to Salsa. It is pretty accessible. I, I, I'm not the most comfortable with the three-step, but it's doable. You could do it. You could do it. <laughs> All right. So uh, starting to wrap up, uh, how can people learn more about the project? Are there any events that are coming up and ways to keep up with your work? 
Yeah, thank you so much for asking. So if folks want to learn more about the project, we have we are building out a website about the whole series. You can go to www.likelowell.com slash Let's Dance Lowell. No underscores or anything, just www.likelowell.com slash Let's Dance Lowell. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be adding more information to that in coming months, information about each mural, each choreographer, eventually more photos and video and a song pairing for most, if not all, of the dances. Um, we are working on having a celebration or some sort of mural walk, dance walk event once all of the eight murals are painted. TBD on that. So to stay up to date um, on all of this, of course, the uh, the case office is posting updates when they can. They have a newsletter, and again, that's likelowell.com. I also post updates. I host. I excuse me. I post um, progress pictures almost every day when I'm painting to my Instagram, which is at k i t s c h collins kitch collins like my name kit kitch collins um so folks can always uh if you want a lot of photos of murals getting painted you can follow me there and i'll post uh I'll be sharing lots of information about our mural celebration mural walk um when we've found a date incredible is there anything else on your mind that you want folks at home to think about or know thank you so much for asking um just want to say thank you so much again to uh, the Cultural Affairs and Special Events Office, especially uh, Director Crew for you know enabling this entire project, Mosaic Lowell for being you know the first you know the, the first couple folks that really helped me get this off the ground. Um, there are like several dozen specific people I would like to thank for helping connect me with resources and people um, that have allowed this project to be what it will be. So I won't name them all, but I'm thinking of you. And um, I just want to share with folks that, you know, uh, I think when people see a muralist out in public, people always tend to have a lot of questions because it's not something that people, it's not something that everybody has the opportunity to do or to try. Um, but I always love to leave folks with the message that um, anybody, can, anybody can start to mural because anybody can start to paint. I started muraling because I just found my first mural wall that I was allowed to paint on. And I've just been going from there. So if you also aspire to paint with your friends in public, just start. And you can always reach out to me uh, with any questions because I'm friendly. Excellent, excellent. So if you start seeing someone uh, painting on the sidewalk, it very well could be Kit. Uh, stop by and ask some questions. My name is Wednesday. We've been speaking with Kit Collins about uh, their project, Let's Dance Lowell. You've been watching The Lowellian, and thank you for watching.